So welcome to Fit Me Toro Fitness Podcast. And uh, today I have an amazing episode for you. So make sure you listen the whole way. Uh, I'm speaking with my friend and one-on-one online coaching client, uh, Skylar, how she lost nine pounds only in a four days. And that was actually the worst thing what she did. And uh, so she was uh, participating in a weight loss competition uh, that she thought she needed to feel better and stay motivated to uh, lose weight, but uh, how wrong she was. And uh, as a lot of people think that setting a time light, timeline and reaching your weight loss goal will make you happier. In this episode, Skylar is talking about how she shifted her mindset of training, how, she, how reaching her ideal weight made her feel and what struggles she had to overcome to be best version of uh, herself. So welcome Skylar and thank you for sharing your story. I'm sure this will help so many people. So for the beginning, uh, welcome to my show. And uh, if you mind, uh, share a little bit something about you, who you are, where you live, and um, how old are you, what you are doing, and uh, about your family. Sure. Thanks, Turo. Um, yes, it, it's exciting. It's funny, though. But so, yeah, my name is Skylar. I live out in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, USA. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cool how we got together, but because um, you're like so far away. I am 42. I just turned 42 a few months ago. And, um, you know, my family, as far as like lifestyle living, I didn't really grow up being like eating healthy and all of that. That's something that's come more recently. Um, and I, you know, have a regular job, work 40 hours a week for the most part and do other side things and fitness has been you know a goal like just being healthy and getting my body I guess I've kind of had the vision of getting my body like how it used to be 20 years ago <laughs> it's like you know this ideal in my head and that's why I came up with that weight goal I kind of was like wow I think I was about that weight in my 20s let's see if I could get there <laughs> yeah so. No, but that's uh, thank you for sharing all that information. And uh, that's actually uh, usually what happens is that you have it's coming from past that you have uh, that how you were feeling when you were younger, or uh, where you think that that number was coming from. Was it like it was like from your childhood or from your past when you were fitting into your old clothes or something that you were thinking that that is the number what will make you feel happier or how you how you were determined that this is going to be your goal and what you what you are aiming for yeah i mean can i say the weights is that okay yeah 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 for sure okay so i'm i'm about i'm almost 511 um at the beginning of the year in january i weighed 196 pounds um which was like the highest that i've weighed um, I had lost weight a couple years ago doing like basically low carb, higher fat, maybe mid protein type diet. I had lost a lot of weight. I think maybe at that time I was like maybe in the 160s and maybe I lost all the way to about one mid 140s. And I did it that way. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is the way I totally had my mindset on like, I don't know if I can say it, like keto type eating yeah. and cardio. I was going to this one particular place that I was obsessed with. I was going every single day and I am not a workout person. So that place was like, wow. Um, so I thought this time I would do that. And my body rejected it. When I entered this weight loss competition, even though that weight that they were offering, you know, the amount that they were going to give me and that weight that they were offering, I felt that it was kind of low and it was going to be a, a, a leap because the last time when I did this keto type thing and I was at 145, I was like, this is not sustainable. I know I cannot keep this up. There's no way I can even get lower. So I was thinking that this time, like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could do that, but you know what? I have six months. Let's just do it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then, but when, what, what happened last time when you tried this keto type of thing, uh, you 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 lost some weight, right? I did. I lost I lost a lot. I think I was in 
I was probably like, I probably lost about 20 something pounds, maybe close yeah. to 30. But, uh, and at the time I thought that, I don't know, my body, I thought it was great because I read so much information. I only read information online that was supporting it. And I followed people and my mindset was like, always like carbs aren't good for you. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. But uh, then what happened after or when you lost that uh, weight? Did you gain some weight this back? This time around? How? Oh, that yes. time. I did. So it was probably, you know, after that was over, maybe I kind of went up a little bit. I would say over like every month, it was just like I just kept gaining a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. And then what happened, because I also had, you know, a discipline of eating a certain way. Like when I would go to work, I would, you know, have certain foods. But then I got into this new lifestyle change i was like a flight attendant and we that just went out the window completely like i had to like move for a month and go stay somewhere i wasn't cooking i wasn't i was eating out trying to figure out okay what can i eat that's keto here it was like i was going crazy and it, i just gained it all back actually and plus more i never weighed 196 pounds in my life and i was like what is happening to me <laughs> Yeah. No, that's that's actually what very often happens. That if you if your methods are not sustainable, your results won't be either. And uh, that's uh, that's the best example. Like that, why, for example, keto is working for a short period of time. It's obviously you cut your calories radically, and uh, after it's usually pattern like you just described that it's step by step, a bit more, a bit more. And in the end, after some time, you will be in a, actually in a worse place where you started. Yeah. And I mean, at the time, I thought it was sustainable because I would hear people say, actually, I only listened to people that was positive stuff. And I thought it would be sustainable because I was like, oh, this way of eating is cool. But really, I do like fruits and everything like that. But I really seriously thought that that's not good for me. I can't have that. So yeah. you changed my mind with that. That was really difficult. <laughs> but what, uh, what, uh, let's go back like six months or four or five months now. Uh, what was, what was, what made you to contact me? Like, uh, what happened? Uh, that? <laughs> yeah. That... So when I started the weight loss competition, right. My mindset was like, I'm just going to do keto and you know, just, figure it out from there. So I tried to do keto and it was not working. My body, for some reason, my body was like, I can't eat this meat. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like, that's the only thing I knew. And then I was like looking online and then I did this other type of eating, which is basically the total opposite of keto. And so I had to wrap my mind around it, but I was like, you know what? I have six months. Let me try it. So I started trying it and I noticed like I was losing weight and it felt like it was slower but I was like, maybe it's about the same rate that I was with keto. And it was just basically eating like, I think it, the voluminous food, like a lot of food, but like more watery type foods or something like that. And it was like all the keto foods were like yellow or red foods. They weren't like, whatever. So that was weird. And I was like, okay, I'm losing weight. This is interesting. And then three months in, I was like, you know what? I need to make this weight loss goal. So I need help. So at the time I was like on TikTok, a lot that was like my main social thing and I would follow people listen to people and for some reason like you were standing out the most like I was listening to certain things that you were saying and it just felt right and I would do it and it made some difference right so I wasn't thinking initially when I started this weight loss goal that I would get a coach but I was like I'm always somebody who if I need to do something and it's very important to me and I need help because I felt like I needed help I need to hire a professional and you just stood out and I was like, let me just see. I didn't even know if you did online coaching. I don't know. I just asked if you did. And then, you know, there we were. Yeah. So um, now then obviously it was at that time. I think you had a, it was three months, three and a half yes, months time. Three months. And uh, you had a, how much you had to lose at that point? I think uh, 30 pounds, something like that. Yeah, I was in the close. 160s. And I remember when we started, because I was like, okay, 
before we start, I need to make sure that you think we can make this goal. And you are never like, yes, for sure. You were like, we're going to, we're going to see, you know, we're going to do some things. And I was like, okay, well, as long as he's not thinking, oh my God, that goal is really crazy. No, I'm not. Then we're, we're going to go for it. <laughs> yeah, no, because that's what I honestly, I remember so well when I was talking like that. Oh my God, that's uh, impossible. But then really? um, you thought, oh my yeah, God, that's what I, I that's what that. I, what I thought. But, uh, but I thought that um, actually it's, that's what you want, but it's not uh, what you think you want, but it's not actually what will benefit you, what will make you feel better. And I thought that, okay, I will help you to uh, feel you better, feel more energized to understand how everything is working. And then my hope was, I thought that we, we will not make it honestly, or uh, I said that there is a way how to do it very unsustainable way. But first I thought that I will teach you the uh, sustainable way, what makes you actually feel better. And then later on, um, it's up to you. If you, if that goal, weight loss goal is so important for you, if you still want to go for it or not. And um, then um, that's how, how we get started. And, uh, and that was, that was my initial thought that uh, no way, that it's way too much I'm to be sustainable. And um, I'm glad you did not tell me that. Cause I would have been like this peace then. Yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> but it's, that's often what happens is like that when you like once, once you have, you talk a lot of with the people, you know, kind of what is behind there. What is, what is the reason? Like uh, you thought at that time, you thought that, that uh, 138 is that goal. What makes you happier? What makes you feel better? But uh, how I, I understood that that's not the, that's usually like you said in the beginning that it's coming from past like you have yeah. those uh, feelings what you had maybe some time ago and that's the feeling what you are chasing for and if you now I think you can say that uh, that uh, it was not uh, to reaching that goal actually to tell you that you reached that your goal it was not the number which make you then happier right no no I was actually miserable <laughs> yeah no, that's uh, we will talk that that uh, a bit later. So, uh, what uh, what uh, kind of you already said something? What kind of false information you believed before, and uh, what you know now that that's completely BS? Well, I mean, you know, because there's people that follow that and they feel like that's the way to go, like cool. But I do see that it's about seeing what's like right for you. So when I was working with you, you know, I was going to this one particular workout studio like every day. And you were, you told me you need to add more strength training. And I was like, well, they do some strength training. <laughs> so I'll just like lift heavier there then. So I was like trying to lift heavier there. And you're like, no, nah, you need like, I think you said like 75, at least 75% strength training, like a lot more. Yeah. And I was like, and I had to wrap my head around that because like, I loved going there and I was like, well, but how am I going to, I can't see myself working out at the gym. I can't see myself working out at home, even though we have this big old little gym thing here. But I saw once I started, I, I looked for some classes because I do the class thing. I found like the strength training class and I saw a difference like, like pretty quickly within that three months. I mean, within maybe a few weeks of just the difference in my body and how I felt with doing the strength training. So that I thought cardio, that was, I guess, not right for me just doing cardio. The strength training made a big difference in my body. And then the carb thing, which I already started like, you know, losing that, but you told me about protein. I didn't even, I never heard anything about that in my life. Maybe I did, it just didn't register about like adding all this doggone protein. And I was like, well, I was still focused so much on carbs. Well, what about all, that has a lot of carbs, blah, blah, blah. So the protein, it has made a difference to focusing on trying to get my protein. And now I'm trying to do it even more. So, and I do have carbs and I was able to lose a lot of weight, still having carbs and, you know, just upping my protein and improving my strength training. Cause I also thought too, like lifting heavy, cause I was trying to do like Pilates. I was like, well, I could do that then. That's going to be my strength training. Like, I mean, that's fine, but you're going to need some more. 
And I was like, but like the heavy weights, like, aren't I going to get like, the, like all like bulky? And he was like, no. <laughs> but the, then when you started to lift those heavier things, uh, were you actually getting bulky or? No. Because <laughs> you're saying that's like really hard to do. And then I would see material online too that supported that, you know, that just do heavy, like till um, fatigue or something. So you can't do anymore. Yeah. And somehow that's been fun because now I, I get to work out less, less amount of time. And I can incorporate actually like some yoga and some chill stuff and still get like better results. Yeah. Because that's, that's uh, what is the most, like you are the best example, like uh, going from, you were working out or working out to sweat, to burn more calories and uh, doing a lot of cardio daily. And then you actually reduced time what you spent by working out and you were focusing more on getting stronger, building like that muscle mass, mass more kind of, sorry. <laughs> building that uh, muscle mass more and uh, and uh, so that made you actually and while you are at the same time you were eating more protein so it made you actually to get better results than uh, than uh, before which was kind of surprising right the way how you have been working out yeah it was i mean i had noticed before a while back ago when i started working out more at this particular place doing the cardio and not changing my eating habits i mean i remember thinking at the time i was like gosh my body hasn't changed and i work out every day now like i haven't changed like why you know once i started eating a little bit different then i maybe i noticed my body like seemed different or i just maybe it got better at doing certain things like running a little bit more or not being so exhausted you know but my body didn't really change that much yeah, so. but how you were, i um, just curious, how you were feeling when you were doing those keto type of things that you cut completely all carbs out and uh, you remember. did a lot of cardio at the same time. So how you felt? Yes, I remember at the time because the coach is there when I started doing keto, they're like, Tyler, why aren't you like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I'm so tired. Like, I remember I couldn't like once my body was adjusting to it, I couldn't even work out actually. Or when I was there, I was just like, I felt like an old person, like I couldn't move. And it's funny because I still carried on the whole, like when I work out, like don't eat anything before you work out. Cause I work out in the morning. So when I started doing the strength training, I would come in and I would have had nothing to eat already. And even, I mean, you told me too, and you said in your videos, like, you know, working out fasted versus having something to eat it gives you more power but like i kind of didn't believe it so when i would go and do these strength training things you know the coach was like you know you could do heavier it's like skylar did you eat today <laughs> like no i never eat before class it's like yeah you need to eat something <laughs> so every time i go in they're like did you eat today skylar <laughs> <laughs> and i do notice it does make a difference like i don't know what i was thinking. i guess that's another bs thing like to work out without having eaten anything <laughs> yeah no because that's that's just the usually just now now what you have learned that it's common sense like that you have if you cut out carbs completely which are primary source of energy to have more energy to work out and uh, if you cut all your carbs out you your workout quality will suck and uh, now when you understood that okay maybe it was not the carbs it's actually having good energy to go perform your workout with better quality and then you started to see also progress in your workouts so you were not feeling exhausted all the time you started to see difference in your body and obviously that's uh, was giving a motivation right or or how you felt yeah it definitely was and i mean even when i cut out carbs it like I, it affected my sleep like i couldn't sleep <laughs> oh yeah i remember that too so, which would make me more tired. It was just like a hot mess. Yeah. So, um, but you were also, you said uh, at some point that you were struggling with uh, binge eating and uh, kind of that those uh, eating like that you were restricting so much. And then at mm -hmm. some point it was like that 
now I can't take it anymore. Give me everything you want. And uh, it was not just the one meal. It ended up often for several days, right? Yeah, you, I did. You want to share I something? Mean, it, sure. I mean, for like that time before when I was doing keto, I would I would be pretty strict. Sometimes I couldn't believe like how disciplined I would be. I was like, wow, this is crazy. But then like... <laughs> oh, let me have one candy corn or like one marshmallow or one donut. And I just like go crazy. It's like the taste of sugar. It just like wakes up this beast. And then I just, you know, would go crazy because I, you know, like that. I like that kind of stuff. Or I would kind of obsess, you know, when somebody would at work, you know, people would bring donuts and I would like stare at them, like my mouth watering, like I want one so bad, <laughs> you know? And then I would think like, I really, cause I really love, I love food. <laughs> you yeah. know, I was like, well, maybe I'll be one of those people who just eat for energy, like forget about all this extra food, but I'm not that person, you know? Yeah. And that's what happened to once I, once I really fully got off keto and I was like doing, um, the flight attendant thing and just I was like just eating horrible again like just back how I was but worse and I couldn't so get off that how like, yeah how how you were how you are are you now still uh, struggling when you started to add more protein into your diet and uh, adding actually some carbs do you still how 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 is your pinches now so or, or how you were because, able to improve so with this weight loss competition thing, because I wasn't like towards the very end, I wasn't fully always listening to you because I was like, <sighs> I was like insane. Actually, I went like crazy because I was doing things that you did not really tell me to do. <laughs> oh, I, what was your question? <laughs> no, that how, how, how those, how is your, uh, that been sitting oh, uh, now? Yeah. Okay. Or how that did it improved with I, um... it, it has. So, well, because I was starting to restrict towards the end, you mm -hmm. know, I was afraid to eat anything that I love too much because I know how I am. Like I could just, mm -hmm. you know, I have no breaks. So, but it's better because now I, I actually focus on, okay, Skylar, you need to get your protein goal. Like that's your goal for today. Get that in first. And then you know, if you still want to eat more, which I can still eat my favorite foods and still be so yeah. full, then do it. But it's like such, it's at least for now, because it's still kind of new for me getting that protein goal in. I mean, geez, like I would be so full doing that. <laughs> I really yeah. don't have room. It's more of a mental thing. I just sometimes still, but my binge eating is not how it was before at all. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly what often happens. That once you get your first at your protein goal, and then you have always that your mind is still want to go to do those things. It's not that now you are not craving sugar anymore, but it that's already a huge win that you are craving it less less than before, and it happens uh, yeah. less less than before, and uh, that's all what then makes the difference in the in the long term. Yeah, because I can still have you know, tasty foods, you know, before, cause like, I love maple syrup. Like before it's like, oh, I can't have any of that ever again. And now like with my breakfast, cause I have enough protein, like, okay, if I want to have like a little maple syrup with it, it's fine. Like every day I could have something tasty, like fruit. Like I was so happy to be able to have fruit again. <laughs> like I oh, love yeah. fruit. Yeah. So I get to have those tasty things every day a little bit. Yeah. Perfect. So then, um, um, so after we worked two months, more or less to, together, I think you have lost at that time, you started like one from 163, you lost like over 10 pounds. Uh, so which is over pound per week. And that's actually for fat loss. That's amazing progress. And, uh, but then you had a, at this timeline, you had another 13 pounds to lose within a month. <laughs> So how you were feeling at that time? Like uh, how, how was, how, how you were feeling? Well, I mean, so when I was listening to you, right. I was just like afraid because you're like, lift these weights. And I was like, oh my gosh, but is this going to help? You know? And then I saw the scale was going down and I was like, okay. 
But then I was doing my calculations in my head. Well, if it took this long to lose this amount of weight, I need to lose this amount of weight. I don't know if this is going to work because it seems like it was getting harder and harder, you know, because I knew kept wanting to like, keep it sustainable, keep it sustainable. <laughs> like it's getting too close like we need to do this to be honest with you it was like it was so i was so stressed i mean even I though i'm glad to have done it like the experience but i would never do something like that again because it was it was too stressful if i were to do it again i would have made it a longer period of time to lose that amount of weight maybe like nine months a year to do it mm -hmm. so that maybe if I would have spread it out that long, maybe getting to a weight like that could have been sustainable if I would have done it over a longer period of time, or I would have realized that maybe that weight is not. And then I did realize too, that like the weight, like the scale, cause you explained to me weight loss versus fat loss. Like your, the weight can be a certain thing, but your measurements, cause I never would measure myself. I didn't even want to measure myself. Like, oh, this is so boring, like measuring myself. But then, you know, I want to lose inches. Like, I don't care. Who cares what the scale weight really says? Exactly. It's really about the inches and like I, the way that I fit in my clothes ma that matters. Because when I did lose this water weight at the end, I don't know. I think my muscle, I lost muscle too. Like my yeah, butt just sure. went flat. I, I was like, whoa, what happened to my pants? I can't even, I couldn't even fit in anything. I looked so stupid that I had to only wear certain clothes at work. People are like, Kyler, what's wrong with you? Like, you look like a stick figure, <laughs> which partly was like, oh, thanks. But other <laughs> <laughs> and I felt, I didn't feel good. You know, on one hand, I was like, I had moments where I was like, wow, cool. I look good sometimes, but then other times, like, I just didn't feel good because it's like, if I'm going to restrict all day just to be like this, well, who cares? Like, why? Nobody cares. Like, what's like, I, I want to feel yeah. good. Yeah. So basically, you were already uh, mentally and physically, even your scale weight was higher in two months, and you were in a better place after when you reached your original weight loss goal, what thought that number would make you happier, right? Or am I wrong? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was cool to see. But that's when, it, when I saw the scale weight, when I finally got to it, I was so I'd never been this exhausted in my life. I felt like an old woman. I couldn't wait to drink water and just whatever. I just, I, I mean, I, once I got to my scale weight and got back to eating right, I mean, my weight just jumped up you know, from right. adding the water back in, which was mm -hmm. fine. Like I didn't care, but I kind of looked the same, you know, it didn't make, you know, much of a difference really, except I felt better. Yeah, no, because that's, that's uh, like that, uh, just to, to be sure that everybody like that you, you actually, you lost, to, which is a very, very good uh, fat loss rate, uh, 12 pounds within uh, two months, two months, something, and then within basically last month, you lost uh, 13 pounds. And uh, those from those 13 pounds, last nine pounds within last four days. Which is unbelievable. I could, I did not, when you told me that, I couldn't believe that that would happen. I was like, how could I, how could I do that? Because in my mind, if I wasn't working with you, there's no, I know for sure, there's no way I would have made that goal. There's no way. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have known to do all of that. I would not have known. I would have been probably just trying to like eat. Because in my mind, I thought I would just have to like eat nothing then. Like don't eat anything, which, which I can't do anyway. It's like I'm not able to do that. But yeah. in my mind. Yeah. And I would not have been able to get to that goal because I still couldn't believe that I could. I still didn't want to listen to you towards the end. <laughs> but I did because I was like, I, what I'm doing is not working. It's not working. Yeah. Yeah, no, because I, I remember you tried, you didn't, uh, I told you what exactly what you're supposed to do, which I said that uh, those things, what I told you, I don't want to share publicly that somebody, otherwise somebody is going to try to do actually those things. But just the point is that it is possible. If you want to lose weight, get that scale going down, it's possible. Like uh, you are the best example that uh, nine pounds within four days, just scale weight. But to get that point that it's not that weight loss what makes you actually happier it, it makes you it makes you feel worse and uh, if you are using these strategies what you used what i told you you can get your scale weight down within short period of time like um, you did 
uh, so much weight in cup, only a couple of days, but that's not uh, sustainable. Right. And uh, like that's what I wanted to hear hear you that uh, how how you are how how it end up like you got that scale weight and uh, yeah. how much you, you gained everything back, right? I was um, I got I had gotten to one thirty seven with the scale weight, and then um, now I probably teeter, and that was I don't know maybe a little over a week ago <laughs> and now I'm teetering you know it's like fluctuates because I thought after that I was like I'm not weighing myself anymore for like <laughs> what's the point but I kind of have been because this is interesting <laughs> but it doesn't bother me but my weight it probably I probably teeter around 145 but I literally mm -hmm. look I look probably almost the exact same that I did you know mm -hmm. I probably looked more bonier but I was there's no way that I would have been able to sustain that. Yeah, no, like where that's, I'm at that's... now or whatever I can, I can sustain. And it's fun now. I'm like, so glad that's over with because now I can play around with food more and just kind of play around with stuff more to see with my calorie count and just kind of see what happens to see what my body likes. Because like, I want to take care of this body the way that I was before yeah. I probably could have like died. <laughs> I was yeah. scared I was gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, because that's that's uh, and that's uh, the, I think the biggest takeaway is like what you can that you know what is how your body is working, and that uh, you know what it means if you want to get that scale weight down. You know what you're supposed to do, but at the same time, it's not uh, anymore that scale what makes what you thought in the beginning, like a couple of months ago, that when you have that your weight, you will be you will feel like a twenty years or a couple of years ago when you had that weight right yeah yeah i mean well even where so this 145 that i'm at now versus i mean a couple of years ago when i was a few years ago when i was 145 doing keto i feel so much better <laughs> right now you know the way that i got here versus the other way was totally different a totally different lifestyle of way of eating but you know i got here and now i can like eat foods that i still that i still like yeah. versus so. restricting so much and my you know my workout has changed completely you know i see like muscle tone people compliment me on it i don't really remember i mean maybe they were complimenting me on stuff before but i don't remember as much i feel just more mm -hmm. i feel more like energetic now too mm -hmm. i think i was just energetic before because i was like insane <laughs> Yeah. you know and I was like yeah. super disciplined for a while but I had to like drink so much coffee I had to like drink stuff to go to sleep it was just like my body was kind of a mess no that's those are like that now if you compare where you have come come from and where you are now like that uh, now you you know that you can maintain that your weight where you are and that uh, you don't need to do some dieting you can actually eat foods what you enjoy what you love it's okay to have those foods what you actually enjoy you know that uh, from working out you are actually working out less than before like yeah. from amount wise a lot like less. The... yeah because i was working out like an hour a day with cardio and now i work out like 30 minutes i mean with a with a weight training because at first i was doing i was doing like the weight training and cardio i was like working out every day and you're like um so maybe we need to take rest because that amount of calories you're burning with that hardcore cardio your muscles need that to grow and i was like but I, and it was so weird to like sometimes just go for a walk or just to chill but i work out i mean when i do the strength training like 30 minutes maybe of yeah. this hard you know and the thing is too uh -huh. it's like after i would do strength training like i wouldn't sweat and i was like but did i work out hard i mean i worked out hard but then sometimes I would feel sore and sometimes I wouldn't. And I remember you saying too, like, you don't need to feel sore after every workout. Like that would be a yeah. problem if you're always sore like that. Yeah. So it was just so weird to have, wrap my head around because with cardio, I'd be like this. I mean, I would sweat. Now I do sweat more because I do lift heavier and I try harder because I thought I was lifting heavy, but I really wasn't mentally. <laughs> yeah. But I don't sweat as much as I do when I did cardio, but that's yeah, okay. So yeah, that's that's okay. And but it's it's the biggest yeah, work smarter, not harder. That's the that's the whole idea. Like uh, that you should not what is the point to do more if you get same or even better results by doing less. 
Yes, and, exactly. And I get to incorporate and, more stretching classes, yeah. which has been and, so nice. Yeah, no, that's that's the whole point. Like that, it's it's obviously from strength training. Like you are the best example who have basically never done it before, and now when you started to do it, like at first it was hard to. It's kind of everything new. The feeling what you get from doing it, like that you don't feel like that uh, was this enough. Did I did I even work out? Because instead, when you after cardio, you are exhausted, you sweat. You are like that, yeah, now I had a great workout and that's not the same feeling, but then results, what you get, they are. Right. It's definitely different. And then even, you know, I see, because I, I go, I've been going to these classes where every time we do the strength training, it's always different. And then, you know, I see what you're saying about having a program, like doing some of the same moves each time, just so you can try to improve on. And it's funny, the place that I go, they started, they're doing a program now where we're doing the same things and we're building from there and writing down the weights, you know, in our app. Exactly. So it's it. so it's because I realized like, okay, I can see at some point I'm going to have to move on from here, but now they're doing that. And so I can see, like, I'm totally different. Like I never was like a weightlifter before. Like, it's like, <laughs> I've never done like, this. Because so cool. <laughs> I would never go to gyms and I see people doing that. And I'm like, uh -huh. what is that you know <laughs> yeah i'm that's uh that's so valuable <laughs> lessons and i'm i'm so proud of you how you swift shifted your whole dieting exercise because it's it's yeah. not the easy thing to do at less you have you are those beliefs what you used to believe it's are true and then basically shifting them all the time like it takes some time but you were actually doing it a very short period of time. And, uh, and now I, I'm so happy for you. So proud of you, what you have reached. Uh, you reached your weight loss goal. You won a lot of money by doing it. And you understood that it was not the weight, what you were aiming for. It was that feeling, how, how, to, how you are feeling, how much energy you have, you sleep better. And uh, even you have a couple pounds more what scale is saying it really doesn't matter no it doesn't and i definitely thank you so much because i mean you definitely know what you're talking about because there are times like i initially when i was going to work with you i was like well i'm not doing any kind of workout because i already have a workout plan where i just work out here and then you're like so oh, but let's talk about that and then you got me like thinking differently because i was not trying to hear that and then yeah you just really helped me change my mindset like when i was stuck on this you just kept what with what you know to be right and kept saying it in different ways and didn't budge and i was like okay skylar like you trust him like you you know like all the stuff he was saying on tiktok before is right for you just come on it's just so weird when my mindset it was like on a whole different track and you like helped me i would not have been able to do that by myself Maybe it would have taken some years to finally get there, but there's no way I would have been able to get to where I, where I am. And I had no idea that this was going to happen. Thank you. Thank you so much for trusting me, taking action. And uh, I'm, I can't say how more often enough how proud I am for you, what you have reached. And uh, thank you for sharing this story, story with, uh, with uh, me and all who are listening. And um, I think uh, we, you have to go. So it would be love to talk more, but um, we will thank wrap it out so here. Much. And so thank you for listening. And um, if you find any value from uh, this podcast, uh, those reviews are really helping. helping. So if you think, uh, if you don't find any value, don't leave rating, but five star ratings are helping a lot. And um, thank you so much for listening and uh, talk to you soon. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.